Greetings viewers, welcome to my channel, and today's video is a bit of a troubleshooting one. The issue I'm having is a very nasty ground loop buzz when I'm using my PV VB3 tube amplifier uh, using the XLR out going into either a mixing console or a recording console. And usually there are provisions on most amplifiers or mixing consoles where you can get rid of that buzz, such as a ground lift switch where you can uh, remove the shield from that particular wire and it should get rid of any buzzing or any stray sound noise that might be coming into your signal. Unfortunately, that is not solving my issue and I've decided to kind of really dig into the amplifier and see where the problem is. So as you can see, I've taken apart the amplifier and I've removed the patch bay where all the speaker connectors and all the interconnects like your effects loop and your DI out is and it's just one board that has where all your control, uh, like this is where you connect your foot switch and all that stuff. So that's the main patch bay. And then just to give you a quick look inside, you know, it's very, very cool to look inside there. You see your eight fire bottles, your EL34s, and then your uh, five, uh, I think there's a 12 AX7, and then there's a 12, there's one 12 AT7 in there somewhere. I believe it's this one. But it's just one incredible amp to look at inside, especially with the engineering of the switch mode power supply here. It does have two fans. I thought it just had the one on top, but it actually has two. It's blowing air from a cooling port on the bottom here, and it's drawing air out of the switch mode power supply, taking the heat up through the tubes, and then this fan is blowing upward and drawing the heat away from the tubes. So some of the testing that I've done, I was using different cables, I was using ground lift pin adapters that would lift the pin one of the XLR DI, and that still was not getting rid of the buzzing sound. What wound up fixing the buzzing sound was I have a bunch of these rolls, isolator, combiner splitters here, that's the MS-20B, the newer ones that are available at the time of recording this video are the uh, MS-20C. All it does is add a little 1 8 inch headphone jack on the side there. And it's got an isolation transformer on the inside. So if you connect the amplifier here and say your mixing console, your recording console here or interface, it will galvanically isolate the signal between the two devices and you can actually lift the ground uh, between the two XLRs completely and you should not get any buzzing and that's what solved my problem. There are two flavors of DI out circuitry structures. The first one is electronically balanced and the other one is transformer balanced. You're going to see electronic balanced much more commonly because of the cost. It's much cheaper to and a transformer well it's going to cost a lot of money to have that one component in there and you get the added benefit of isolation. Most amplifiers in this case, here's the VB3, has an actively electronic balanced DI, and it's run by a very common op amp, which is right on U1. It's a 4580. All it basically does is that it sends the signal to the hot, and then it inverts the cold signal 180 degrees, and it does all that work through that chip. The only drawback with an electronic DI is that you don't get the isolation as you would with the transformer. So the VB3 has an electronically balanced DI, and so does the Mini Mega. And the Mini Mega I've connected in the same fashion to my rig here, my FX2 series mixer, and I did not get any buzzing sound at all. Where the majority of the ground loop is coming from is located at these resistors. It's R21 and R20. From what John was telling me, they are not necessary. They were not supposed to be in the production model I'm guessing because they are what they're basically doing is that if the amplifier is off and you have an XLR cable connected and you have the ground lift switch pushed in the set of resistors was meant to tie those pins as close to ground as possible and bleed off any radio frequency interference that might be coming through on that cable because the cable is essentially acting as an antenna but those two resistors were not necessary because on an electronically balanced DI, this is some tidbit information that I learned, is that when you push the ground lift button on, a, on one of these types of setups, it doesn't truly lift pin one from ground. What it's doing is if you push that lift, a ground lift pin there, it's going to route 
pin one through an RC network or a resistor and capacitor. Those two right there, R31 and C8, are in parallel with each other and they're tied to ground. All that basically does is that if there is RF being generated from the wire that's connected to your XLR port, it'll short all those radio frequencies to ground and you won't hear it, thus keeping the amplifier quiet when the amplifier is off. And those two resistors there were not necessary in this design. So remove those and you should be okay as far as getting rid of the ground loop. But unfortunately, it proposes another problem. So I was looking at what else can we do? And John had suggested changing out the capacitor specification on C7 and C2, which is part of the feedback loop for the op amp, and increase the value. And without getting too technical, there are 100 picofarads normally. He said change it out to 470 picofarads. The more capacitance you add to the feedback loop, the more attenuation and bleeding of the high frequencies to ground you'll be able to achieve by doing it that way. It's another low-pass filter in the feedback loop. And that was the intent on changing out that capacitor. And it did help a little bit, but unfortunately it still was not enough. Now the reason I'm changing out the 4580 op amp, the initial thought from John was that the D1 and D2, which is right over here, or at least they were, they, they're a set of diodes that take the supply rail voltage of 19 volts and negative 19 volts, and it drops it down to 18 volts, which is the max that a 4580 can handle. We thought that there could be some supply rail noise coming into the op amp, and that was what's causing the noise, but after uh, further discussion, it turns out that it's not really supply noise, but I'm going to change it out anyway. Instead of a 4580, I'm going to get rid of those diodes completely, and he suggested putting in a 5532. And the reason why we don't think it's supply noise anymore is because all this time I've been testing with 50% 12 o'clock. You're actually looking at the board upside down. But some of the noise, the fan noise, and some of the background and the buzzing actually would start to go away when you were to go at 100% here fully clockwise. And then if you turn this all the way counterclockwise, which is essentially off, then you would not hear anything, but you would still hear the op amp running. You would basically hear like a, a low level amount of hiss, but no you know, buzzing or any fan noise. So uh, we thought it was supply rail noise, but it's not. But since it's going to be more of a peace of mind to change out this op amp for a 5532 that can better handle the 19 volts without having to compromise the level of voltage going to the op amp with these D1 and D2, that's what uh, I'm going to do. You don't have to do this, but I'm willing to try anything at this point to make this circuit quieter. Okay guys, this amplifier is all repaired. I have it all put back together. The modification is not as hard or complex as it sounds, but the history on how this came to be a problem in the first place I thought was very interesting. And it's a simple oversight. It can be easily corrected. But the, I guess the journey for me has been the most interesting. I've been working on this project for multiple weeks now, and it's probably been uh, many many years this amplifier at least the one that you see before you was made in exactly june 23rd 2010 because all the boards inside say that it was handwritten with the letters mc on it and this is a later production model because it's got the rhino liner covering on it here the early versions came with the tolex lining and the vb3 throughout its production has had the same issue with the noise on the XLR. The XLR, you get, you're able to route two ways, either before the EQ and everything inside the preamp here at the input, or post EQ after everything in the preamp, and all your tone controls will go to the PA system. That's where you're hearing the majority of the noise. And it was also bleeding a little bit on your pre-EQ, now, but it wasn't so much of an issue. That's probably the reason why this was maybe not even noticed for a number of years. Only certain people who like to route post EQ. I like to have whatever I'm doing uh, in my amplifier, all my effects, my route, uh, tone controls, that kind of stuff. I like that to go out to the PA rather than just having a straight uh, bass signal going to the PA if you're doing anything you know complex with your tone. But 
the problem is not just on the patch bay, it's also in the preamp. It's a routing error. And the easy way to fix it is as follows. Now, the interesting thing about the fix for the VB3, it was actually corrected for the VBMA, the Michael Anthony version, and I didn't find out until after John had sent me the schematic of the preamp for that particular amplifier, and it turns out that my fix matched exactly what they did for the Michael Anthony version, so I'm further vindicated that I was on the right track with this modification. So the preamp routing error, there, there's a wire that's connected to a P post on the patch bay, and it runs back to the amplifier preamp section here, the post EQ. And there's a white wire, pin six, that goes from the preamp to the patch bay, and that's connected to V3, which is the 12AT7 here on the back corner. It's on the right side of, of, the, of the amplifier, and I'll show a picture of where, of where it is. I think you should be able to see it there and it's connected to pin one through a capacitor through a 100 kilo ohm resistor r38 to be exact and that white wire runs up to the xlr post eq the problem when you're trying to tap off of that pin pin one it's very very noisy and now at the same time there is a preamp out and a power amp in jack on the back of the patch bay the preamp out should be post eq which it is and that, interestingly enough, is routed back through another wire, which is pin one on that post EQ connector. And it goes to the V3 tube as well, but it's tapped off of pin six through a capacitor, through a resistor, but then it goes through an operational amplifier, another op amp, very similar to the XLR, that chip that's driving that. And the wonderful thing about op operational amplifiers is that they pose a very high impedance to the source that they're getting their signal from, but they have a very low impedance for whatever they're driving. And essentially what that means is that you're not loading that circuit down at all. And that preamp out quarter inch jack in the back has had a very clean signal since the initial testings that I've done. And I wanted to be able to get that signal over to the XLR. And that's exactly what I did. I made a small jumper wire at the P post connector. Here's a picture of that. And then I also, before I made that jumper, I also had to remove the white wire that's at the patch bay. That's pin six. You don't want it's you don't want to get the pin seven or eight, so it's a white wire. Just electrical tape that off, and you're not gonna take the signal off of pin one anymore because that is where all the noise was coming from. You know, I'm going to connect it and parallel the preamp out quarter inch jack with the XLR post EQ feed and voila, that fixed almost all the noise and I got very clean signals on either post or preamp, uh, a post EQ or pre EQ. To close this out, just want to give a quick shout out to John Fields, the engineer over at PV. Thank you so much, man. Without, I couldn't have done this without your help. Uh, getting the schematics, looking at them, studying them, trying to figure out where we can go and fix it, all your suggestions to work on the patch bay. It, it's been a, a very invaluable help. I really appreciate it. And uh, thank you to Steve Everett and thank you to Bobby Baldwin. I haven't heard back. I sent you a message. but. This is definitely a very unique amplifier. I can really respect and appreciate the history of this amplifier being 37 pounds, switch mode power supply, uh, probably one of the last amplifiers PV made in America before things moved over to China. And, you know, I still am a very big PV enthusiast, always will be. You know, I have mostly PV gear as it is. And, you know, I'm just, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning now that this is working the way it needs to you know i ha i don't need to worry about any kind of buzzing issues it's just m much simpler than i thought it was going to be but it was a long discovery process and i'm passing that along to anyone that has if you're having this issue it's very straightforward i again if it, anything's not clear please let me know i will do my best to help you guys out and again thank you so much guys and thanks for watching